Good morning. Uh, this is Kent, Panama Equity Real Estate. Going to give you a little bit of an update about what is going on in the world of Panama Real Estate. And the good news is, as always, there's a lot going on right now. So in case you guys uh, follow us on Facebook, uh, you would have seen that um, on my Sunday walk through my hood, which is El Cangrejo, um, I was able to catch some people in uniforms in front of the new Veneto Hotel, and it's going to be called the Waymore. And man, for Panama veterans, you guys probably remember the Veneto. It was an interesting place. Um, at one time, it was like, you know, the most popular hotel in Panama. And then it closed down and under a shroud of mystery. And an anchor hotel like that in a neighborhood like El Cangrejo, especially on a street like Via Veneto that used to have all of these awesome tourist stores, little trinkets, uh, restaurants, and just activity, man, kind of died down for like four years before the pandemic. Well, and if you already know this from watching our Facebook page uh, from my broadcast this past Sunday, dressed with my walk-in clothes on, you would know that that hotel is opening again way. And I think it's like at least 300 rooms because I think that's what you have to have as a minimum to have a, ho a casino license. It's going to be nice and it needed a facelift anyway. So, hey, real estate tip, El Congrejo could get kind of interesting again. You know what you, and actually Val, one of our lovely salespeople, I believe has submitted an offer on a property in El Cangrejo, in the Del Caribe building, I think asking price was, I want to say around six, fifteen fifty. I think it closed around fourteen hundred. We have rolled out in the last couple of months internally a platform created by one of our amazing tech clients that we're collaborating on, where we can scratch, scrape the public registry now. Ta-da! It's like what I've been dreaming of for the last 15 years in Panama, which is being able to have real-time access to closed sales. Now, of course, we have an MLS still, but we internally now have the ability to, at the click of a finger, generate entire sales history for like any building you want. Um, you could do that on the public registry. It's just really tedious um, and it's not organized well, and there's no way to compare data. So Anyway, uh, not bragging, but kind of bragging. That came as an aside for some comments on my neighborhood, El Congrejo, which is going to get interesting based on another new hotel opening, the former Veneto. So what else is going on in Panama? What could be useful for you guys who might be thinking about buying or might be thinking about selling or renting or renting out your place. Well, developers have started to pick up again. You know, that's a good thing to an extent. And, you know, we have been plagued with oversupply and there's just been a ceiling on price appreciation that is mind boggling for anyone that's been looking at this market for a while. And, you know, I've been in it since 07. Sure, prices came way up and then they kind of came down and they've just been plateauing. And it's crazy because one of the biggest drivers of Panama real estate is what happens outside of Panama. That's what's pushing people to Panama. That is what has historically pushed people to Panama. Um, and, you know, that's been very good for business over the last six months because there's a lot of turbulence in the world right now. You know that. Look around wherever you might be watching this from. In the U.S., it's politics. In Europe, it continues to be immigration. Obviously, the war in Ukraine and Russia. So it's not like, oh, I'm going to buy, I'm going to move to Panama because it's a strong economy or because of something going on macroeconomically generally, right? I mean, as an investor, sure, that's important in terms of capital appreciation, being able to get decent yields on your rental properties. But more importantly, guys, don't forget, as the world gets crazier in terms of politics, it just sort of angst, taxes, everything, 
people move to Panama as just sort of this oasis. And yeah, we still pay taxes as an American. <laughs> I pay taxes uh, because as an American, there's really no way uh, it's, it's, however, Canadians, Europeans, they've got a ability to take advantage of a territorial tax system, which as you all know, or maybe you don't, um, Panama is not going to charge you any income or any taxes on your income if it's foreign earned, right? So people love that. Uh, that's continuing to bring people to Panama and it's a good thing. So what else can I tell you about the real estate market? What's going on right now? So again, developers have started launching some beautiful projects, Costa del Este, Coco del Mar. We are excited to be, um, just making sure my mic's on. Um, hope it is. Please comment if it's not. Um, so it looks like Steve, thank you. I, it, comments are always appreciated, guys. Uh, that way it's not just a monologue. Feel free to ask me anything. I'm actually going to be doing another one of these with a compilation of all the questions that people have asked us over the years. Well, the best and most relevant questions that the public might want to know. But what else is going on in the real estate market in Panama? Okay, city rents coming up. They've, we've been tracking those certain buildings for sure. And really as a whole rents have gotten a little bit higher, maybe five to 10% in the last 12 months. Most of that has been this year. Inflation is definitely being felt in Panama, but not like it is everywhere else in the world. Uh, specifically in the United States, you know, the cost of the general basket of goods like groceries, right? Um, has come up for us here. I'm watching my milk uh, go up and it's kind of annoying, but not like when I go back to the US. Um, Panama got kind of expensive, but the US has been running ahead of Panama such that people are coming down here now and they're like, oh, wow, it's cheap. And we're like, really? Um, nice to know that's happening again because there has been um, a bit of, that gap is closed in terms of the cost of living difference between, and of course it comes from, depends on where you're coming from, right? If you're coming from like New York or like LA or, you know, Stockholm, oh, we Panama is still going to be cheap. If you're coming from, you know, Chicago or like Florida panhandle, um, things will still be somewhat cheap here. Things will be surprisingly expensive here. We could do a podcast or a video post on just that. What's still kind of weirdly expensive in Panama and what has still stayed cheap in Panama. I'll tell you what's still cheap and that's Medicare, you know, uh, medical attention, uh, and really first world, really nice technology down here in terms of like, you know, CT scanners and just, yeah. So there's still a great value. People are still coming to Panama for that, but this is not supposed to be a commercial. This is supposed to be an update. So what else was I going to talk about? Beaches market is still good. You know, Coronado, Buenaventura, Bihau. Uh, we've picked up a lot of local sellers over the last couple of weeks uh, who are seeing enough of an uptick in the market where they're like, hey, maybe we will finally put our property on the market. Um, so that's a good thing for if you've already purchased. Um, interest rates generally trend, um, you know, LIBOR or kind of whatever you're seeing in your home market in terms of interest rates, kind of the same thing here, which is up. Uh, so that's no fun, but Hey, I mean, it is what it is, right? Uh, yields have also been forced to increase. So yield being, Hey, I am a owner of a property and I want to rent it out. Um, the, that's also driven up the rents as much as the market will bear because, Hey, if, if you're thinking about buying a property and renting it out, then you're also going to be thinking about putting money in a CD, or you'll also be thinking about buying maybe a U.S. treasury. And when those rates are like four, 5%, um, with generally less risk, less liquidity, uh, well, I guess, yeah, I don't know about T bonds. I can't pretend I'm not a financial advisor just say things sometimes to sound smart. Um, but I know kind of what the rates are, but I don't know how they're liquid. There are, um, I'm sure there's a secondary market. That's the point of what you can sell it for, right? Is what it's generating. So anyway, back to what I do know about, which is real estate and um, rents have come up, yields have come up, prices have not caught up as quickly. So there's still a little bit of a gap, but I tell you what there's not, and there really hasn't ever been, which is 
There's not much money left after you pay your mortgage. If you're looking to buy a property, put a mortgage on it and lease it, meh, you know, you can definitely cover costs. Uh, Catherine at the beach has done a great job um, with some of these Playa Caracol listings, right? That is a nice project. Uh, it got oversold in terms of the people that sold it back in the day. Oh yeah, you can rent it out every night for $150 and look at these yields. We get that a lot in Panama. Um, just work with us and we'll tell you the real deal, but developers tend to uh, fluff a little bit. That said, Playa Caracol, not a bad project. If you're a surfer, if you like to be on the beach, Punta Chame is kind of off the beaten path. It's about 15, 20 minutes down the road. So you got to get out there. That's 45 minutes and you hang a left or right, wherever you're coming from, go down the peninsula. Once you get there, it's beautiful. That said, investors are still looking at that. And, you know, maybe they might clear, let's call it on a $250,000 investment. They might get five grand out of it a year, right? Um, so it's not uh, super exciting from a yield point of view. But if you're using it and you're more than covering your cost, then, of course, it's fine. It's not going to be like a boat where you just end up, you know, what do they say? First day and last day are the best days you own a boat. I kind of told the punchline before I told the joke, but you guys have all heard that before. Um, any questions? Where, where are people watching from? It's always curious. I'm always curious. Um, next time I'll get other people on here. We need to get back on that, you guys. But there's just so much business. I'm out on the street. Uh, what else can I answer questions about or fill you in on? Who's buying? Still getting a lot of Colombians, Peruvians, people that are worried about their political situation. Again, if you're just joining me, the big secret about Panama real estate is that a lot of people buy because of what's going on in their home country. Maybe that's getting some diversity in their portfolio. Maybe they are worried about whatever is going on, politics, religion, war, the usual stuff. Hey, Alberta, Canada. Darren, thank you for saying hello. That's nice of you. It's nice to know I'm not just, you know, speaking into a microphone. And hopefully some of this is valuable. Um, anybody have any questions? I can wait for a little bit. We always answer the questions in the comments as well. Um, company news, we just sold another building, which is cool. Multifamily, 20 apartments, sold for about 1.8. It was generating around, gee whiz. I think around 20K a month gross and then taking out property management, um, vacancy commissions, maintenance, et cetera. Those buildings tend to do a little bit better. Uh, you know, that would all amount to about six grand ish. It's kind of expensive. Um, taxes, running utilities, all that jazz. So uh, larger buildings. Obviously, you get some economies of scale in terms of, hey, you know, uh, more, more control in the building. Your costs can get spread out over more units. And we also offer a discount on our property management rates, which are usually 10%, um, 20% for Airbnb. Hey, Airbnb's been rolling in the city. We don't really do it except for buildings that allow it. And there are a lot more buildings that don't allow it where you can easily find an Airbnb. We won't be managing those because we don't want to uh, expose our clients to any potential repercussions because there is a 45 day um, limit on, yeah, you, you can't sign a lease or have someone coming in. All right, moving to Panama, Len Rock, come on down. Uh, the water's great. Miami, interesting. Yeah, I mean, we get a lot of Florida people. Uh, we get a lot. Oh, Costco View. Thanks for asking. Desmond, um, love Costco View. Uh, I was one of the original buyers there, so I am slightly biased. I actually um, sold it to buy out my partners, but hey, nobody looks at the internet. So um, yeah. Great project. Brian Wagner is a fantastic developer. We are so close. We're going to be managing quite a few. And they do have a, um, all right, El Congrejo. Yes, Lynn Rock. That's my neighborhood. I'm on Calle Alberto Navarro in the Mandalay building. So, um, yeah, there's some more uh, TMI for the internet. Um, great building. 
Costco View. So, guys, if you don't know Costco View, um, we can sell you a unit. We can help out rent out your unit. Great project. It's on 16th Street in Costco. So it's actually not in Costco. It's like Santana, which is the neighborhood right next to Costco. So you got the tourist center, which is awesome. And like, you know, a bunch of people walk around with cameras and, you know, cruisers that just, it's hilarious to see Costco just like dump like a thousand cruisers. And cruisers are a unique breed of uh, folks. They just kind of walk around. They like to be in packs and Anyway, um, answering your question, Desmond, um, Costco view is looking good. It's going to be done in a few months. It can absolutely have that, uh, Airbnb, um, angle on it, uh, because it's got the permit to do so. Uh, and I like it, you know, it's on the fringe. So it's like, we're still waiting for path of progress. It's coming, um, around the, uh, La Manzana, which is the, Apple, they've branded it. Um, it, it. It's having development all over it. And from a real estate angle, that's exactly what you want, right? You buy when there's blood on the streets. And if you Google blood on the streets, Panama, you will see a article I did 15 years ago about everything that's wrong with real estate agents in Panama and why I'm one of them. So let me get back to more of these questions. Thank you guys for some of the questions. Buenas from North Jersey. All right, let's go Sal. Come on down. Look at El Congrejo. We're getting some great, um, yeah, at representation for my neighborhood. Should I play it on negative appreciation for the next 10 years? Oh, let me bust out my crystal microphone here. <sighs> I don't know. You know, I mean, like Panama is such a weird precedent. Uh, look at the last 10 years. It's been like kind of flat or even where were we in 2013? Depends on where you are, right? Like specifically even the building, because there is a building. I'm not going to mention it, but feel free to send me an email, Kent at panamaequity.com. And I'll tell you the building to stay away from. Uh, it's brand new. We stopped selling in it. We have to manage a few properties in it because people approached us before we realized the extent of the issues. Um, and it's fortunately, there's not a big precedent in Panama of these types of buildings, but Lenrock. Oh, Luxor 400. Love the building. Um, Luxor, Luxor 100, 200, 300, and 400 built by um, Pacific Hills. They're terrific because they've been around, right? They do good work. Luxor 400 is, we've sold a lot in that building. Uh, we can't wait. Well, we're already administering. So yeah, it's, um, it's good news. Um, so yeah, I mean, and Darren, I'm going to get to your question. Lenrock, you know, I mean, Hey, let me, let me allude to what I was going to talk to for a second. And it's actually in context to your question about, should I, let's put this question up because it's scandalous. Just like your picture. Uh, that's a fun one, Lenrock. You look like a great guy and we um, appreciate your business, sir. So, um, all right. Here's the case for not negative appreciation. Uh, Panama has always kind of relied on these mega projects, right? Started with the canal um, and then the next canal or the expansion of the current canal. And that always brings a nice little spike in like rentals. Like we've got... I heard between 500 and a thousand Koreans coming down in the next six months to, you know, finish up with the drilling of the canal, uh, like tunnel, uh, the Metro, et cetera. And that's good for the short term. You also get some, you know, equipment suppliers that come in and base and maybe they stay. Is that enough to drive the needle? Probably not. Although Panama is a tiny market, you know, when Procter and Gamble moved in and they relocated 1500 families back in like when I first moved here, like 07, 08, woo, that moved the needle and it stayed. So the good news is on a macro level, Panama can be affected both positively and negatively very quickly because it's a small market. Uh, the biggest issue that we've had, oh, thanks, Catherine. Always pertinent and interesting info. Well, you work here, so, uh, but I, good look. You just got a raise. Um, so, um, yes, uh, I got distracted. Mega projects, how are they good for the real estate market? Well, um, 
quality of life is kind of the long play. So like when the airport gets expanded, people tend to move here a little bit more because they can get home easier, right? That's a good one. Cruise ship will bring additional exposure. The terminal, uh, that's been like kind of open for a while, but not officially inaugurated. Ah, Panama, we do that sometimes. Um, so that is good too. That's on the positive side. Let's go negative. Um, we have historically had an issue with oversupply. Now, yeah, COVID, um, that slowed things down for sure. New construction starts. Also, it's gotten a lot more expensive to build. Mostly, obviously, inflation in terms of building supplies, which is an international market. Labor has also come up. The SunTrax boys were protesting a couple days ago and girls. Um, so, you know, that's always something to watch for. Um, you know, but that has also slowed down. Does that mean that we're going to see a lull in future supply over the next two to three years? Yes. That could be our saving grace for those two to three years. But hey, we have gotten a lot of new construction starts. Um, I should analyze some of these reports we do um, online with you guys and just like show the screens. But anyway, don't plan on negative appreciation for the next 10 years, Lenrock. Although somebody smart told me, and I love this advice, don't plan for the good, plan for the bad. Um, so yeah, I mean, inflation being what it is, uh, yeah. What would cause negative appreciation? Obviously a drop in demand or an increase in supply in a general sense. Um, why would less people come to Panama? Well, if they start getting funny with their immigration laws, like they did a while ago by like yanking the plug essentially on what was a really cool initiative uh, put out by our favorite jailbird, uh, Ricardo Martinelli, um, is... Mi estimado presidente, no tengo ningún desrespeto por usted. Um, he did great things with immigration. He created the Friendly Nations visa, which was like a boom for the real estate market. Rents came up, therefore yields came up. Unfortunately, during that time, uh, his predecessor 10 years prior essentially created Panama's real estate boom and all the projects were coming online. So prices were not able to come up. All right, Darren, if you're still with us, sir, best beach to move to. I mean, are you a surfer? Do you like being around people? Do you not like being around people? Uh, the good news is less rain and safe. Uh, we gotcha at the beach. Um, no, I mean, you don't get as much rain at the beach as you do in the city. It's They call it the dry arc or el arco seco, dry arc. Um, and that's going to be from like Gorgona all the way out to like Buenaventura and even Penanome. That's sort of, if you look at the map, you can just see it. Now, they've been getting rain because it's September and we're in the tropics. So for the same reason that your palm trees will never die outside and your Mornings are filled with tropical birds, flora, fauna. It's still the tropics. So, you know, I mean, rain, mm, it's going to happen, but less rain is definitely out that way. The beach is in Chiriqui. And thank you guys uh, for the questions. This allows me to just keep blah, blah, blah. And instead of I can actually address a question. Um, safe. You know, over the years, um, like I said, I've been here since 07, so it's like 15 years. You definitely hear about home break-ins. Um, sometimes people are there, sometimes they're not, and it's frightening. Um, the good news is you hear about them. So it's not a situation where they're just happening rampantly and nobody's talking about them. Rather, it is pretty infrequent, so it hits the news. Now, not the major news channels, but the expat groups. Uh, those are great sources of info. You know, I mean, just like anywhere on the internet, you get your negative Nancy's and, uh, Nick's, uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, people are very unfiltered there. And I would say crime, you know, what you got to worry about crime in Panama, specifically at the beach as a resident is just not leaving your house, like empty for like a month condo. You're good. Um, when you have contractors coming in, if you got a bunch of people who you don't know, you probably don't want to have like your hundred dollar bills just like 
sitting at the kitchen counter, right? Um, generally, I've found that Panamanians are not, uh, as a culture, like petty thieves, right? Of course, there's an exception. We got 4 million people down here. You also get a lot of laborers that come from, or contractors that come from Colombia, Venezuela. Maybe they're just passing through trying to make a buck. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, let's see here. Any other questions that I haven't addressed? I think I got them all. It's getting a little long. Um, but I'm happy to, if you guys want to squeeze any other questions in, um, it makes for hopefully a more valuable, um, monologue. Uh, otherwise guys, lots going on. You know, I'm fortunate to have an awesome team and um, surrounding me experts, you know, we're aligned on ethics. We are up to date on the market and we're very well connected and surround ourselves with professionals. So, you know, um, what does that mean? It means we're easy to work with. Uh, we are at your service. We've been doing this for a while. Check us out if this is the first time you're seeing us because, hey, uh, Google, Facebook, people generally don't hold back for the good and for the bad. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Have a great day day and I'll try to do those these a bit more often. Hasta luego.